Welcome to Technically Speaking, the show for the technically challenged. If there's one question I've been asked more and more over the past several months, it has to do with the new operating system, Windows 8. Most of the time, you don't even think about an operating system, which is basically the nuts and bolts that are running your computer. Well, you don't think about it until they change it. And just a few months ago, there was such a huge change that people are stopping me on the street to ask, how am I supposed to work this Windows 8? I even know people who've returned their computers because of it. So today, we're going to focus on finding our way around, personalizing it. Maybe even by the end of the episode, it'll be something that you're enjoying. So let's sit back and do our best with Windows 8. First of all, if you take a look at the screen, you've probably seen something that looks like this before. It looks so different from the way your computer looked up until just a couple of months ago that it's shocking. The biggest change is that there are all sorts of, they call them apps or applications, dancing across the screen. Now, the reason that they did it like that is because there are so many popular devices nowadays, like iPhones, iPads, Android phones, and we're all using them and we're finding them comfortable. So Windows decided that they wanted to get on that bandwagon with the little apps that we get on the screen. The other thing about Windows 8 was, to be honest, it was designed for touch screen. So if you have a device like a tablet computer or even a laptop that you can touch, Windows 8 makes a lot more sense. But if you're sitting at a traditional computer, all of a sudden, you're stuck with a mouse, and it doesn't make any sense at all. If you take a look at it with all of these apps, if all you had to do was touch one to open it, you probably wouldn't be having a problem. But once we have a mouse in hand, nothing makes sense, and it's incredibly frustrating. The other reason why the big switch to Windows 8, one had to do with the touch screens, but the other had to do with the way we use computers today. If you're, I'll call you an original computer user, or someone who's been using them from before all of these games and apps, you probably remember the days when a computer was something you used to do something for work. But nowadays, most people's computer time is not actually used accomplishing anything. They are consumers. They're watching things. They're looking at web pages. They're looking at photos, watching videos. They call those web consumers, as opposed to people who actually do work at a computer. Those are creators, people who need a spreadsheet, a word processing sheet, maybe even just to make a greeting card. Windows 8 is perfect for consumers. If all you want to do is look at the news, the weather, Netflix, other things, it works out beautifully. If you actually want to accomplish anything at your computer, though, it's a totally different story. Well, let's take a look and see what we have here. First of all, you'll see all of these different apps. And our first problem is how to see that the ones that are off the screen. Well, down here at the bottom, you'll see that there's a scroll bar. It's not natural to scroll from side to side. I think we're used to scrolling up and down, but this side-to-side -side gesture is not an easy one to do. There is an easier way, and if you take a look at your mouse, you'll see that your mouse has a little wheel on it. Just spinning the wheel will move the entire screen, and I can spin it back. Well, that's a heck of a lot more pleasant than trying to move that little scroll bar at the bottom. So the first thing you're going to notice when we spin the wheel is there's a lot of stuff built in. Before we even have to personalize anything, they do give you a lot of different nice programs right out of the box. What is also interesting is if you look at these apps, some of them are actually doing things. You'll see some movement going on with news, weather, even my email keeps popping up as I'm speaking here. It's very, very interactive. You might like it. You might hate it. But let's look at our first thing. I'm just going to choose one of these, uh, USA Today. Click on it, and here I am, into USA Today. Again, to see the rest, 
I'm going to spin the little wheel. That way I can see more things. That little bar at the bottom does bother me. Now the first problem people find with Windows 8 is that the apps are often full screen. Meaning if you look at this issue of USA Today we're looking at, we're not quite sure how to get out of it. We used to have up in the corner a little X, and you always knew that if you wanted to close something, you would hit the little X. Well, now we're kind of stuck. So the first thing we're going to look at is on your keyboard, you have what they call the Windows button. It's a little button that has four squares on it. If I simply click that button, I'm back to where I started. So, so far, I went into one of my apps here. I could read the whole newspaper. And when I'm done, I'm going to click the Windows button. The same will go for any of these apps. Here's one with the weather. I'll click it so I can check out the weather. And when I'm done, since there's no other way to get off of this screen, I hit the Windows button. I find that simple act to be one of the most frustrating pe things people have encountered with Windows 8, is simply not knowing how to close a program once they're there. And it's as simple as hitting the little button to bring us back to this start screen. The other thing you're going to notice about this start screen, there's lots of things built in, but let's say this one all the way over here, Microsoft Office. Maybe this is one that you use a lot. And it doesn't make sense for it to be all the way over here. Well, you can drag it. I can make it right up front if I like. This way, every time I get to my computer, that's one of the first things. I can take anything that I like a lot. Maybe I like to read books on Kindle. I'll bring that up front too. And you could see that all of these little boxes adjust, and I can simply drop it in. This is a great way to personalize your space, is to simply go through all the little squares, find the ones that you want, and put them up front here. Now, there are other applications that we're not even seeing here. These are just the ones that came included on the desktop. But there are others, too. To see all of the applications, I'm going to hit this Windows button and the letter Q. Now you'll see that all of my applications opened, and there's lots of them here. If I decide that any of these are things that I use all the time, I can do what they call pinning. I can pin it to the Start menu. So for example, Amazon. I like Amazon. So I'm going to right-click on it. And you'll notice at the bottom it said, Pin to Start. So all I did was I came here to Amazon, right click, Pin to Start. Now, when I hit that Windows button to go back, we can find Amazon. Now, of course, it's not right up front. They put it all the way at the back, didn't they? There it is. If it's something I really like, I'll drag it up front. Here we go. So in this way, you can make your start screen exactly the way you want to. We press the Windows button and the letter Q to see all of the applications. If there's one that we would like to put on the Start menu, we'll right-click it and say Pin to Start. Here's eBay. Right-click. Pin to start. Now I'll go back to that full screen. And as I said, the ones that we've pinned are all the way at the back. Here's eBay. I'll simply drag it forward so I can see it more easily. Now my start menu is beginning to look a little more the way I would like it to look. 